So my name is Brian White. I'm a professor in the biology department, and I've been teaching biology here. Well, th this fall will be my 20th year here at UMass. And for um, most of those years, I taught a very large lecture class, Biology 111, General Biology 1, to sort of between 200 and 400 students. And it was taught as a traditional lecture. And gradually, I evolved to do more active learning things in the class. I, I started, the simplest things I started with were um, think pair share, one of those things where you ask a question, you have the students turn to their neighbor, and then they think about the question and they raise their hands and answer it. And then when clicker technology came along, I moved to, to using clickers, and that got me to be more active in class. And then eventually, the trouble came that there wasn't time in class to do both lecturing and all these active things with the clickers and the like and the think pair share kinds of questions. And so an opportunity came along to flip my class where I used some online recorded lectures and some online questions and problems and, and rearranged them and made, moved all the lecture content uh, online so students do that before class. And then they come into class not necessarily knowing all of it, but at least being prepared to think about it, having, having seen the material and understanding it to some various degree. And then we come into class and what I do in class is a series of um, eye clicker questions, usually between sort of three and 10. I start the students with some questions that are at the level of difficulty what they saw online, and then move them towards questions a level of difficulty that they might see on the exam is one way to do it. There's all kinds of active learning things you can do much more advanced than what I do, uh, case studies and more discussion-based things. I, I tend to do something simple. The clicker questions work well for me. There's a number of advantages. One of them is that there were definitely times when I felt like I was just reading things into the record, just saying this bunch of stuff. And that, that's not a very good use of mine or my students' time. They can watch a lecture like that at home. Um, and so, and it's more interesting for me to do and more interesting for the students to do. Also, there's a whole lot of evidence that's been collected, especially in science, that if students are actively involved, so after, after they learn something, if they then have to use it in some way, they learn it much better. The other thing is um, I can now in my class focus on the hard things. That is typically in the, in the lecture days, to get to the point where they understood where there was a problem it took maybe 45 minutes, and then in the last few minutes of class I have to try to ask that crucial question uh, that, that gets at their misconceptions and then try to address it, and usually that's very difficult. Whereas the nice thing about this is I can start right off with thing people have difficulty with. So I can say, like you saw in the video, you were probably puzzled by this. Here we can talk about the things that they have difficulty with, and I don't end up spending time on stuff that they typically get. And another advantage is also that you probably had the experience as a lecturer that, that you get to the end of the lecture and there's that one question you'd love to ask that ties all the pieces together. And uh, you, it's either right after the end of time you don't have time to ask it or everyone's closing their notebooks and so you don't get a chance to ask it. But the nice thing about this class is you can spend, with a flip class, you can spend the whole time asking those really important questions that get students really thinking about stuff they have trouble with, the stuff that they really need to get. And you can leave this sort of content presentation uh, into the online materials. And so it's really changed the dynamic of my class. That is, instead of spending all my time shushing them while, while I'm trying to lecture, I encourage them to talk to each other, encourage them to exchange ideas, encourage them to think about the material. And then I get their, their interaction in class is much more interesting, much more useful to me. I get much better feedback on what they get and don't. And the students leave class with this sense that they understand the material because they've actually used it in, in a concrete way in class. I started by flipping the entire class. Uh, and I thought originally that you needed to do that because you want to sort of establish a convention for what's going to happen in class so that they know to expect the same thing every day. I don't think that's strictly necessary, all that can help. Um, the, there are several places that you could start. One of which is oftentimes these days textbooks tend to have lots of online components with built-in quizzes and videos and things like that and, uh, and textbook readings. And so some of that stuff may already exist for your class. That the online content may be some part of your textbook already. The other thing to do is to start small. What I did in General Biology 2, I took part of the course and flipped it. So there were parts of the course where it was really just a bunch of material that I, as I said, was reading into the record. And so I made those, I took the lecture capture that, that the university already re records, so that was already in the can, and I chopped those up into smaller pieces and interspersed them with some sort of test yourself questions and made that, put that on Blackboard. And so then for those classes, we just worked on the hard parts and, and, and just flipped those. That was, that worked well, not quite as well as doing the whole class, but it's a good place to start. 
Another place to start if you want is to start at the other end, which is start with more active learning to take your regular lecture and start to sprinkle in questions um, that you might have the students think about after you've presented a little bit of material because there's a ton of evidence that shows that that's very useful. And what you can do then is if you've got the lecture capture from that, after you've added questions to your lectures, is you can take your lectures now and chop them up and, and take the lecture pieces like say right up until when you ask the question, you put that on Blackboard, and then you take the question you ask and you put that on Blackboard, and then you break it up like that little video question, video question, and that can help you to flip too. Um, so there's a bunch of different ways. There's the textbook, there's um, flipping small parts of it, and then there's also starting at the active learning end and building those things in, which might be a way to get you started down the road. So the material I used, um, the online material was part of a MOOC actually and so about a half or perhaps two-thirds of the videos were actually sort of professionally shot and as part of this MOOC that I edited. The thing you want to be careful about when you're putting the online materials together is in order for it to work well you really have to put a lot of thought into what parts of the video you include, what questions you ask afterwards, and, and, and how you follow up. Very important not just post the video and tell people to watch it, because they won't have a good sense of what to get out of it. You need, to be, you need to guide them in their video watching. And so my view, the questions, although technically speaking, that's where they get the points. You don't get points for watching the video, you get points for answering the questions. So one small goal for the questions is to make sure they've watched the video. The more important goal, though, for the questions is to give the students a sense of what they're supposed to get out of the video. So the, there's a guide for watching the video. What are the details that are most important? Right? And the thing that one student gets watches many times can be different than another, and they can do it in a very time flexible way. So the students, we asked the, asked the students for some feedback, and the things one of that was one of the things they particularly liked uh, about the way the course was structured. And I asked the students, what, what do you think I should do? You've seen the course ta taught in this flip way. You've seen courses taught in conventional ways. What should I do next fall with the next crop of Bio 111 students? And overwhelmingly, they were in favor of the flip class. Um, that was sort of the people who said definitely do it uh, the, the flipped way. Were, there were about 10 times more of them than there were of people who said definitely do it the old-fashioned way. Um, and again, they liked it for reasons having to do with uh, the online videos and the, and, and the way it got them engaged. And in fact, it's interesting because I saw them in the next semester's class, which wasn't flipped, and they missed the online materials because it gave them a structure to their studying, especially in the freshman class. I don't think the students necessarily know how to study and what the students gave them a structure and a, a format for studying that. And so they felt like they were keeping up with the class. Um, and it gave them an opportunity to, to know where they stood, because as they practiced with the practice problems online, they could see whether they're sort of getting the material they're supposed to get. And we did a little bit of evaluation. It's not super, super rigorous, but I gave them the same final exam, or three quarters of the final exam questions were the same the first year I flipped as the previous year when it was not flipped. And the students did just as well. And so the, they were able to do just as well on my, on my final exam, and I never lectured about any of that actual material. They didn't watch any, they watched my lectures, but they didn't actually have to come and sit in. We actually got to spend time on the, the difficult stuff. There are lots of videos on the web, and it's very subject dependent, and what you can find out there. What I did find, um, which makes it a little bit more complicated, is that the students responded much more strongly, positively, to videos of me than of videos of a different lecture. The main reason for that is that I, like you, know our students well, know where they have trouble, know how to talk to them, know how to explain things in them away, and you've had years of experience knowing where the difficult parts are. Although you may find things online, in the end it may be best to use some of your own lectures, unless you can find stuff that really covers what you want. I think that would be a very strong match. You can't just grab something about the topic matter online and hope that it'll work. You really have to vet it and make sure it's good. And so for me, it turned out the stuff that I did was the best. In the second semester course, when I talked about before, where I flipped a small part of it, this we did entirely on Blackboard. I took some lecture captures that I had, we chopped them up into small, short segments and made Blackboard little Blackboard quizzes, one, one or two questions between each segment of video to get students ready for class. And that was quite successful.